Hey guys, Saul here, and today we are going to talk about some of the deadliest and most dangerous experiments in chemistry that have gone on to be very famous case studies about how science isn't always safe. We've all watched those lab safety videos and training you have to do before every lab that you've ever entered or taken a class in, and some of these chemistry experiments that I'm going to talk about today are the reasons why we have so much strict safety in a lab. Because this science that is done every day might be considered routine, and complacency can be had where safety isn't actually thought of as much as it should be, but this is kind of a reminder that science experiments aren't always safe. The first one I want to talk about is about a compound called dimethylmercury, and many of you may have heard about this case and about organic mercury compounds. This is kind of inspired by the fact that there was recently news that came out that a student tried to synthesize dimethylmercury on their own, and after you hear this story you'll understand why that is a terrible idea. Karen Wetterhan was a professor at Dartmouth who specialized in toxic metal poisonings and was doing research on mercury compounds. Now this happened in 1997 and many of you might know about this famous incident where a couple of drops of dimethylmercury fell on her double gloved hands and a few months later she passed away from mercury poisoning. As it turns out, the latex gloves that were used were not sufficient protection and the dimethylmercury quickly traveled through the gloves. And because, unlike metallic mercury, it does have an organic component to it, it actually interacts with the systems of the body much easier than pure metallic mercury would, and because of this it can easily cross through the skin and the blood-brain barrier. Now, mercury, when it enters the body, inhibits certain metal ions, specifically selenium-dependent enzymes, which will completely interfere with the body's processes. And for those of you who haven't taken biochemistry, it's like having a whole set of gears in an engine and taking one out, and if you take that one gear out, the whole system ceases to work. And because of this irreversible damage that mercury causes in the body, this neurotoxicity will eventually build up and lead to death as was the case in this situation. Since then, dimethylmercury has been phased out of a lot of labs. It was used as an NMR standard for a long while, but because of the great dangers it possesses, people don't exactly want to work with it anymore, and for good reason. Now, moving on to the first woman who has ever won a Nobel Prize, and the first person to ever win a Nobel Prize twice, Mary Curie. Known for her pioneering work in radiation and the discovery of two elements, radium and polonium. As you can imagine, work on highly radioactive elements and work on radiation without knowing the full effects, again this was pioneering in discovering radiation and radioactive elements, that isn't always great for your health, but Mary Curie did this anyway and it is widely known that she was buried in a lead-lined coffin after dying at 66 in 1934. Radiation wrecks havoc on the body. What it does is it comes in and splits bonds in half. If you have a certain amount of high wavelength, you can actually break bonds with it as opposed to just heat things up or cause them to spin. The actual bonds will cleave. When these bonds cleave, it creates free radicals where instead of a compound having two electrons in its lone pair, there's a single electron there and these are super reactive. And when this happens in the body, they'll interact with like the DNA and all. And so if you cleave DNA and create these free radicals, your body has to repair the damage that's doing and it causes more replication to happen and it's kind of going through the list of um, repairs and all and using up the lifespan of your DNA basically causing your body and DNA to just fall apart which is an awful way to go. That being said, 
Some little known facts about Mary Curie is she was actually instrumental in World War I in supplying radiography equipment. And the equipment and work she did in the field of doing x-rays for diagnosis on soldiers for medical benefit is thought to have diagnosed or at least interacted with around a million soldiers through the course of World War I. And it is actually thought that the radium and polonium usage isn't what killed her, despite her casually having samples of them in her pocket and near her body uh, a lot of the time she was in the lab. Most of these are a low enough radiation that they're only dangerous when ingested. Your skin is strong enough to kind of protect you from that radiation. And it's actually thought that her use of radiography equipment during World War I and constant exposure to unshielded x-rays is actually what led to her early death at the age of 66. Now, the next one is far more recent than the other two and still fresh in the minds of many chemists within the community. And this is about Sherry Shanji. Now, this was a incident that happened at UCLA with a graduate student who was working with a compound called tert butyl lithium. Tert butyl lithium is a compound that is extremely pyrophoric, that means it ignites on contact with air. And you only really use tert butyl lithium if nothing else will work in your reaction and you kind of need the strongest big guns to go at it in organic synthesis. And that is because tert butyl lithium is extremely, extremely dangerous with its tendency to catch on fire with contact with air. It is held in special containers that have a septum on top and you use a syringe to pierce it and draw out the tert butyl lithium and take it to whatever reaction vessel you're needed in under inert atmosphere. And this is all a procedure in place so that the tert butyl lithium never comes in contact with air because of its danger. And what happened in this incident is the student was doing this procedure getting tert butyl lithium into the syringe and it all went wrong. What had happened is the syringe containing the tert butyl lithium had come apart, the plunger mechanism had pulled out and this sprayed the tert butyl lithium all over the research assistant who wasn't wearing a fire protective lab coat and who succumbed to their injuries 18 days later. This led to the first criminal case being involved with an academic laboratory accident and there were a lot of fines and uh, a long court case that resulted from this. Those are three of some very famous deadly chemistry laboratory accidents and this is kind of your reminder to always stay safe in the laboratory. Even things that you grow complacent with working with every day can still be extremely dangerous and always follow procedures wear your safety equipment because it can be really dangerous in the laboratory and no one wants to see any unnecessary accidents that happen while doing science. I hope you guys liked the video. If it was interesting, leave a like, comment below, and I'll see you next time.